Yo, yo, yo. Hartstikke bedankt, jongen. Thank you, Ducky Lair. Thank you to SC2 Awake as well. I appreciate it, guys. I believe that our next two nerds are ready and good to go. Prediction is still open. What are you guys voting for? Mixu had a sick game against Max Packs two weeks ago on Dragon Skills. Probably the best game that I've ever seen. No, it was not. It was Babylon. No, Babylon was. Which one was the one he won? It was Dragon Skills, right? Where he looked absolutely fantastic. He's gonna need that. Night Phoenix is not quite Max Packs, but he is very good. But I, I believe on a night like tonight, where Mix is the co main for that other Finnish guy who is in the main event, I think this uh, Vessel 5 has potential. The winner gets 100 bucks, the loser gets 25. It's been a little while that Night Phoenix has played. You guys know, I think, the drill by now that he wants to play every single Friday. Mm -mm. In Mini Saro, we place our trust. Hype Trains as well. Thank you to EUBR and Mini Munster. Let's go, guys. Friday night video gaming. Woohoo! I believe that we are good to go. Game 1 will be on Babylon. Game 2, Dragon Skills. Game 3, Ancient Sister. And Game 4, if we get there in Neo Humanity. And Game 5, Grass 1. I... I don't know if I uh, believe Mixer can do it. I think after the first game, we'll have a much better idea of how these two shape up against one another. I think he, I think this is humor, Ion Blue. I, I missed it earlier, but apparently the man is having some humor and he's memeing. <laughs> Magnet says Babylon will decide the series. Why is that? What, what is your reasoning for that statement? Hmm? Let's get it on. Hmm. Round one. Fight. In our co-main event of the Basilisk Big Brain Bouts number 40 already, guys. That is 40 Friday nights where Basilisk put up $500 for a couple of pro gamers to win. We are looking at the main base of the Finnish Zerg. He's the second best player from Finland. It is Berserker, Esports, and Mixu. I have to admit that I kind of miss the Kov our Mixu days. That just rolled off the tongue really nicely. In the top left side, we are looking at the main base of our Ukrainian Protoss. He played with Team Starcom in the WTL qualifiers, but he is a member of Hot Headed Gaming. This is Night Phoenix. Playing on the Meow. At the last Homestory Cup, Night Phoenix went around with cat ears. And he put cat ears on everyone. And he took a lot of pictures. I think there was a picture of Sarah with cat ears. There was a picture of Roddy at the poker table with cat ears. Being very focused on our little poker game. I'm already excited to play some poker again with the nerds on uh, the upcoming Homestory Cup. December 1st, 2nd and 3rd, guys. <laughs> and obviously, we did get our whiskey, so cheers. Feels good to be back. I'm really excited for a new map. Pool. I'm actually gonna play a lot of ladder games again, guys. I feel like the crazy casting days are kind of over. There will obviously still be a lot of stuff to cast here and there, but I am uh, I'm excited to just play a bit more again and see if I can still make a run at the ladder. If I still have it. I didn't look all that focused. That I was crushing Doanna. I finally took some money of the nerds. Every single homestore got people accused me of taking money of the nerds while I was always the one with 85% VPIP and just donating to everyone. I said, all right, if I'm getting accused of stealing people's money, I actually want to do it once. And I lost on the first day, but on the second and the third day, we won a little. Yeah. There were a couple of very gnarly bad beats in there. It's always funny because a lot of people, they don't even really understand why certain plays are ridiculous. But then you have guys like Molten who have played a lot of poker. And if then Molten plays perfectly fine poker and I'm just doing stupid stuff and it's working out, I can just see Molten dying on the inside. And it makes me happy. Lino is also someone who tries to play somewhat correctly. And is also absolutely fuming if it doesn't go his way. Yes, this is actually a scotch, but I don't know which one. It's the one that I mentioned a while ago that I got from my friends. I can take a little look after game one what it is. I keep forgetting the name. This is not one that I normally have, but it was a birthday present from my Dutch friends. And it is good. It's just, uh, I've had it for a while. Because I, everybody gave me, gifted me whiskey for my birthday, so... It just lasted <laughs> basically till Christmas. It's pretty sick. Hmm. And I, I like most kinds of whiskeys. I even like bourbon. So. I'm not that picky. There's only one that I really don't like, and that is Red Label. I'm a bit traumatized by Red Label. 
First two adapts, guys. Finding five links and a drone. That's actually not too shabby. I didn't see it was five links already. And both of the adapts live. So Night Phoenix is off to a pretty decent start here on Babylon. Mixer will obviously be happy that he didn't lose three or four drones. But uh, losing five links and a drone and not even getting a single adept. That doesn't feel too lovely. Now it's all about getting your queens in the correct position, Mixu, and I believe them being off creep at the bottom of the ramp is not really where you want them to be. The other queen just left the natural, and this is not the start that our man from Finland is looking for. Night Phoenix is finding already a bit more than he's supposed to find. Does take a lot of damage, can get one more drone in. Oh, nice save by Mixu, but Night Phoenix wants it, and it's good enough. Mixu saves it again. Okay. Yeah. As cute as that save is, guys, on that drone. This is not the start that Mixu is looking for. Now, obviously, he will have plenty of opportunity to do better. And it's not quite game-ending damage. But if we go into this best of five with the assumption that Mixu is a minor underdog, you're kind of hoping for slightly better starts than this. All of them, party. Hmm? No, uh, Ivy Sim. It was also the first one I ever tried. But I was too young. <laughs> I was young and stupid and I didn't know that. <laughs> Whiskey is apparently pretty strong, guys. Having one or two glasses is fine, but if you're a tiny ruddy and you start drinking it like it's soda, it doesn't end well. Let's just say my mom and dad were not very happy with me. But a lesson was learned. <laughs> yeah, Mixus killing his own drone there, guys. You guys could see that as well. The queen actually attacking the drone, so we're losing a few more drones. I think that Night Phoenix could have at least killed one more. Triple Oracle at least got deflected in the natural, so that didn't do any damage. Pulls are beam trying to get a cancel. Cancel them, please. Mixu. Mixu, mix. It almost felt that Mixu gambled that the Oracles would run out of energy. That is a kill, my friends. That is just a couple of Oracles straight up killing the hatchery, and that is the absolute last thing that Mixu needed. I am um, almost lost for words because this is just way too much. Losing a couple of drones is not ideal, but if we start losing hatcheries against oracles, this is going to be a tough best of five. That's actually not something I've had in a very long time, Afnord, but I don't hate that one. Like when I was young, obviously I was working on very tiny budgets, so you get the Jim Beam, Red Label, and Valentine's, and also I used to get four roses. And actually, the guys from Basilisk, uh, before I was officially a member of Basilisk, but I already had a few meetings with them. And I told them a little bit about the Stark of Two scene. They sent me a special edition for Rose's Whiskey once, and that was actually very nice. I enjoyed that one, but even the regular one is alrighty. Ducky says that this is not the Mixu you know and love. Well, it's the best of five, right? And obviously, that first game is not necessarily going to be the decider. Uh, Night Phoenix, I do believe, does his best work in PvZ in like the first 12 minutes. I believe if there is any game where Mixu can make it up to Hive, gets Adrenal Glands, maybe gets a couple Lurkers out, a few Spellcasters, I think Mixu will have better late, late game than Night Phoenix. This is that Night Phoenix is probably going to be a bit stronger in this phase in the game. Mixu is going to try to buy some time here, guys, with a very tiny link counterattack. Good job targeting the battery, that's sweet. And now maybe we can get that Sentry and a couple of probes. How are we doing at home though, Mixu? Do we have enough? Well, we, do, we have a lot of units in production. We definitely currently do not have enough to get on top of these stalkers. Hmm. And that is the second hatchery that's gonna get picked off rather easily. And with just a couple of links, Night Phoenix is probably not even necessarily disengaging. Now with the Brute Links joining the mix, that's a bit annoying. The Oracles could activate Bolsa Beam here. I kind of love them, see them go for it. He waited a long time with that one. Yeah. If you're 67 drones as a Zergi, guys, and you've lost two hatcheries in an eight minute game. I think at this point, it's not really up to Mixu to win this game. Basically, what Mixu needs to hope for is that Night Phoenix really drops the ball on his Blink Star Control and goes for one of those forward Blinks that's just a little bit too ambitious, does something stupid with his Oracles. This fight is actually going slightly better for Mixu than I uh, expected couple of stalkers dying i felt that blink was ready but now we're splitting off five stalkers all by themselves to work on a hatch in the top right side five stalkers don't have enough dps so i think you need to recall or he's actually going to try to save it the main army is going to come over and this is obviously a fight that's going to take place off trip nice corrosive ball that's a crazy forward blink though 
Imagine a world where Mixer just had 20 more Zerglings showing up. That would have been something where he could have absolutely punished the uh, Ukrainian Protoss. It's floating a little too much money right now, I think. Should be able to warp in a lot of stalkers. He's got eight. Come on, use your money. Night Phoenix is not using his warp prism. Actually lost a lot there, guys. And now we might lose an Oracle. Yep, first Oracle dies. The only reason that went so well for Mixer is because Night Phoenix was legitimately taking a committed fight with 1,500 minerals in the bank. And eight gateways that were ready to warp in. Mixer is now wondering if he can achieve something on the other side of the map. He's down seven workers. Oh, oh. Okay, if they can get in, guys. If they can get in, there is potential. And I actually do think they will get in. This is a very weird way to defend by uh, Night Phoenix. But in the end, I guess he can wipe in a few more units. Mixer does get a cancel on that Nexus in the top side of the map. The Zorkling count is pretty high, but there is an Oracle that's still helping out. And I think in the end, Night Phoenix will be fine here. Got a Robo Bay finishing up. I think we have a single Robo. I kind of expect a double Robo with that Robo Bay finishing up. Like, he's got the money for it. And I think this is a perfect game for second Robo because of the way that this early game went. Mixu cannot really just sneak out a quick hive and go for very quick Vipers. So you get a couple of Disruptors, you get a couple of Colossus, and your double Robo is really going to shine him. I think that's an excellent call. Mixu tries to make another run by happen, but this is a, these are excellent force builds. Very, very well done by Night Phoenix. It does force a lot of units to temporarily be clumped up in the natural, and they're going to be stuck for a little while. Mixu really wants to make sure they can keep Night Phoenix on three bases, but I don't know if this is really going to go all that well. I think at this point, Mixu is in danger of maybe losing those queens. What are these links? Yep. I thought maybe a bailing run by. At least there is Hive Tech on the way, but I don't know. Triple drop, oh lord. I mean, plus two melee is done. Couple banglings with plus two. There is a chance. If you can just drop a couple banglings on top of the natural and you get 12 probes or even more there, and then you drop a few more at the third or the fourth base, and all of a sudden you kill 20 plus workers, then it does become a very playable game again for Mixer. Seems that these are just link drops. This is a baneling drop though, so we're gonna have a double link drop. This is a baneling run by plus two banes. Go for the stalkers. I think on a moment like that, guys, if you're paying attention, if you go for the stalkers immediately, they actually all die because they don't have enough HP yet to survive the baneling hit. And obviously having four baneling skill, four stalkers is also completely fine. Hive is close to finishing up though, and for as rough as the start, mix to his head. I gotta give Mixer some kudos. Bane link drop in an oversaturated natural. Do I see minus 15 probes here, guys? Might even be a whole lot more. Boom! <laughs> the first one killed 10. It is 16 workers that go down in the end. We got the double link drop happening in the main base. And all of this while Hive is done. Night Phoenix is battling on the other side of the map. It seems that he's just gonna give up on defending. We have more Bane links running into the third. This is peak Mixu. Jesus, killed 35 probes, guys. I mean, if Night Phoenix goes back, he is actually, I think, going to lose the game because Hive is done. Night Phoenix should just try to end it, but he's kind of leaving Disruptors now all by themselves. They do fire a couple of Novas. One Nova is good. But if you lose two out of three Disruptors, you're still in trouble. And he may actually lose three out of three. No, he's going to lose two out of three. Third one gets around it as well, and even a Corrosive Ball. Oh, man, Night Phoenix is in so much trouble all of a sudden. He's building Colossus, guys, but... Vipers are on the production tab, and these Colossus won't have extended Thermal Ends. There is a Warprism in the top right side, and has warped in a couple Zealots, so that's a good move by Night Phoenix. What a game between these two. Mixu with the economy at this point, Night Phoenix with a small army supply advantage, but these Stalkers are in so much trouble against all these plus two melee Zerglings, and this is where you really need those Colossus to be here, and they're not here. It's actually an, a great game by Mixu. A bit of a rough start, but... He has played an excellent ZVP in the last five minutes. Made a lot of correct choices. Found the damage that he was looking for. Is still finding more damage. We're looking at 52 probes dying. It's, it's ridiculous. Seems that the Zealous did kill the Hatchery in the top right. So that's a little victory for Night Phoenix. At this point it feels that Night Phoenix needs a whole lot more than a little victory. If I'm Night Phoenix I'm just all in. Like, I would not want to see this game go on for a whole lot longer. Does he have a Templar Archives? He doesn't. 
Uh, these vipers are such a big problem. I think you kind of need to go right now. Maybe you can get these vipers before abducts are ready. Zealous coming in from the right. This is it. Abduct number one goes off. Abduct number two goes off. If Night Phoenix saves the Colossus without them dying uh, to these abducts, he still has a chance, but he will end up losing them. And even if he killed 16 drones and a base in the top right, it is not going to be enough. These oracles are somehow still doing their thing. This is a crazy scrappy game at this point. I don't even know what I'm looking at. There are 19 zealots on the map. I don't really know where they are. A couple of them have killed another hatchery. So that's hatch number four or five that has died in this game. Are these still all the oracles? From he lost one oracle, so he rebuilt an oracle, right? Yeah. Only lost a single oracle. The zealots right now with uh, the full surround on these roaches. And all of a sudden it seems that Mixu, despite the fact that he's up 24 workers, he's in a bit of trouble as he sent a few too many units into the natural... Banelings on Crypto can get great connections with Zealots, and that means that the Stalkers are all by themselves again. 81 supply against 113. What a fight! These guys have been swinging for defenses for like 5 minutes straight at this point. And only a single Viper is remaining, but... Now since there are no more robots... Never mind, zero Vipers are remaining. Mixer sets up another run by, and the shield battery has died. And I don't even know if Night Phoenix has the money to really warp in any stuff. So he's going to lose a few more probes. Ultra painful. Uh, Mixer has just done a great job in rebuilding bases. Transferring drones as well. Plus two melee and adrenal glands. These links are going to shine by themselves. There's a couple of links in the main. These links immediately go for the battery. Which is a very smart choice. There is some potential, man. This is all the workers are going to die, guys. There's a couple of links in three different bases. Night Phoenix knows that this is not something he can keep up, so he needs to win the game with this army. And if you need to win the game with this army, I would say bring over your oracles, mate. There is no anti air. Here are those three oracles. Oh, there is one queen. One queen is all there is to it. And we're actually going to drop a couple of force fields. Can you believe it? 16 minutes into a ZVP, we're going to block Mixu out of his main. With a couple sentries, there are some ravages. I don't know if using your pulsar beam this early is really the play, though, because you need the pulsar beam damage to win the fight against the zerglings. I think Mixu has it. Eventually, the ravages will take care of these force fields. The oracles are out of energy, and a couple of stalkers are simply not going to cut it against all these zerg units. Good job there, blinking into the low ground. But Mixu wouldn't be Mixu in this game if he doesn't have another tiny link counterattack. And even the tiny link counterattacks hit like a truck when there is nothing at home defending. We're down to our final four probes. We're down to our final couple stalkers and zealots. It is Mixu from Berserker Esports who takes the 1-0 lead after 16 minutes and 30 seconds. Honestly, sick game. Actually, a really sick game. Mixu lost his fourth hatchery against Oracles. Lost like six, seven drones before it all started. And he still kept it together. Uh, Night Phoenix obviously had a somewhat questionable fight in the top right. Where he had the five stalkers by themselves. But that was an awesome game. And kudos to Mixu for going for run by after run by after run by. Not all of them found damage. But basically every single time he, he took out a battery. He took out a couple of defensive units. And it basically was always the alley oop for the slam dunk that would come in later. And now apparently Indy is going to join us too. Can you guys believe it? Indy did not want to watch Opatry. Did not want to watch Cuckoo. Now he's here for Mixu Night Phoenix. I guess there was a... I think it's Wardy's tournament over, guys. Because I know that Wardy was running a qualify or a tourney as well. Maybe uh, Indy was covering that one. The Mixu kid seems Italian. Ah, great game by Mixu. Can only be uh, very proud of that one. Because not too long ago, guys, there was a legitimately, I think, a four or 500 MMR difference between these two. Where Night Phoenix clearly took a lot of steps on the ladder. And Mixu, I wouldn't say he was stuck, because he was always getting better. But it kind of felt that a couple other players around that region were just improving a little bit quicker. Uh, so to see Mixu play such a strong game one after a rough start against a man who was way higher ranked than him a while ago... I tip my fedora to the man from Finland. Round two, fight! In the bottom right side, we are looking at the main base of one of the two Finnish Zergs. We'll see in action today at the Basilisk Big Brain Belt number 40 already. Taking the 1 0 lead as we load into Dragon Skills, Berserker, Esports, and Mixu. In 
In the top left side, we are looking at the main base of our Ukrainian protos who loves putting on Cadius, people in Krefeld. I don't know if he's gonna make it to the next home server cup, but I hope he does. And also, I hope he can play, because I have no idea why last time he did not play. He was there, and he was definitely better than some of the other players in the tournament, but I guess it had to do with maybe the amount of protos players that were already available, and I guess the folks over at TakeTV wanted a nice racial distribution between all three races. Perhaps that's why he couldn't make it. Poor Protoss players, guys, getting discriminated because we have too many of them. This is the Ukrainian Protoss Hot Headed Gaming's and Night Phoenix. Hmm. They're going for a fake cannon rush, but Mixu has the balls of steel and he looks at this and he's like, Yeah, you're not doing that, mate. Oh my! Cold as ice, baby! Mixu doing his best Matty Ice impression over here. Doesn't give a fuck. It's gotta feel really bad though if you'd like try to scare your opponent with a cannon rush and your opponent just looks at it, hasn't even seen anything yet on the other side of the map, it's like yeah, that ain't happening bro. <laughs> I'm glad you're having fun Coco, that's what the big brain bouts is all about. Just us watching a few lovely games of Stark of Two together and having a good time. If I can make some of you guys chuckle or giggle, that's a bonus. Matty Ice? Yeah. The man who dropped the ball for my Falcons. I am, however, by the way, guys. I absolutely smashed Wardy in fantasy football last weekend. Oh, baby. Apparently, in the ESPN app, there is a power ranking, and Wardy's team was number one, and I was number three. And I didn't just beat Wardy. I freaking smashed him by, like, 45 points. <laughs> Don't ask me who I've got on my team. I've got Jefferson. Justin Jefferson, that's all I know. I think my quarterback is uh, my homie, but he has not been off to the best start. I swapped out one random player, and then the random player that I I fielded over, I think it was Brian Hall for the Jets, because he had a little cue, he was questionable, so I was like, alright, I'll send the other guy. And then the other guy had like the best game ever. <laughs> yeah, I've already set it up. It's like a little fun league with a couple of people that used to watch StarCraft 2 and a few friends of Wadi that like the NFL. Wadi is a really big NFL fan, like a bigger one than I am. I think it's cool, I follow it a little bit, but most of the time on the s Saturdays and Sundays, I already have square eyes of watching football, as in soccer, for eight hours straight. That I don't know if I really want to spend the entire evening watching NFL, but Wadi doesn't care much about soccer, but he does love the NFL. But it felt really good to beat him. <laughs> We've got a league with the Team Ruddy guys as well, but I'm doing really bad in the the Ruddy Discord NFL fantasy football team. I'm 0-2. <laughs> Mixer guys has a decent amount of links here, and I wouldn't have hated if he tried there, but... Apparently wants to preserve his high link count, and that's okay too. Oracle already revealed itself, idling between these two bases. Mixer's off to a pretty decent start here. I'd say already a better start than he had in the previous game, and he brought that one home. Soccer is terribly boring. I mean, it's almost like that's an opinion, mate. <laughs> like, why don't you rephrase that with, I find soccer boring. And that's okay, you find it boring. There are many other people who think StarCraft is boring, but you're here watching it with me. And I love it, and you love it. It's okay to have different uh, opinions. Soccer sucks. Alright. It seems like you're just a bit of a douche, but that's okay. I think you suck. What about that? <laughs> we have two adapts shading into the natural. First drone died. Second one is an accident saved by Mixu. He has a lot of lost mining time here, guys. And there's actually a little more than two adapts are supposed to find. As we cancel the shade and the Night Phoenix wants to get more. And he is getting more. Six drones dying. A lot of lost mining time. Oracle still healthy. You gotta be happy with that. Hmm. I love you though, Roddy. I, I don't really care, like... <laughs> that That's nice of you, but like, it's like, it's okay. If you don't like something, let other people like it. Like, I love soccer. I like NFL too. I like StarCraft. We have a lot of things in common that we like, but we don't need to down-talk other people's passions. Like, there are people who really love volleyball. I look at Pi. That's okay. I think volleyball kind of sucks, but... I'm not gonna sit here and say volleyball's boring, volleyball sucks. It's like if other people have fun with it, like isn't that all that matters? Let people enjoy what they enjoy. If they don't do any harm with it, what's the big deal? 
Yeah, Pi is a volleyball boy. Well, I believe he plays mixed. Maybe that's why he likes it. <laughs> you love rugby in SC2? Yeah. I mean, rugby is badass, but I personally don't really like the sport. But no need for me to uh, crap on it. The only, the only point I draw the line is cricket. Molten is trying to convince me that he likes cricket, and that's where I draw the line. And I will be a douche. Cricket sucks, and everybody knows cricket sucks. That's not even a sport. Come on now. <laughs> no, I'm kidding. Anyway, Night Phoenix is in the center of the map. Drops the revelation, takes out a couple of the active creep tumors, but the stalkers get surrounded a couple seconds before Blink is ready. And that is a painful recall if I've ever seen one. What was that? Four out of five stalkers dying, or five out of six? It was like 1.5 seconds. Before Blink was ready, so painful for Night Phoenix, who was obviously making a lot of cool moves so far in this game. But if, if your entire game plan is built around the Blinky Boys, and the biggest strength of the Blinky Boys is that they don't easily die, but you lose five that early, and that is a problem. Mixu setting up a tiny run by that obviously gets deflected in the natural, has a couple of links distracting at the third and he tried to get a cancel on the center base unfortunately for Mixu that didn't quite work out mm -hmm. we have Miknik in the chat who is cheering for his uh, fellow Ukrainian protos Night Phoenix I think it's around time that you play again no it's been a little while mate did you give up I, I need to see some more protos all in hmm? when is Ruddy going to weigh in on darts I, I don't feel too strongly about darts. My parents really like it. Like, my mom actually... <laughs> sometimes, guys, I mean, like, this streaming marathons, right? Where I do, like, nine hours a day of StarCraft. And then whatever free time I have, I watch a bit of MMA, F1, or football. Like, the three sports that I enjoy the most. And then my mom, like, if I would give her a little call the following day, she's like, Oh, did you watch darts last night? And I'm like, no. <laughs> I don't have time to watch darts, mom. But uh, my parents are really into it. I I can see, I think it would be fun to maybe attend it once live, and just sit there in a fun British audience, drink a bunch of beer. That would be fun, but I, I don't think much about that. Mix is doing a good job in keeping this hatch safe, but we also have a tiny drop, guys. But if the gateways have just been used to warp in units elsewhere, and we can see that a lot of stocks just got warped in, like these links have some potential, but it seems that Mixu wants to morph his links into banelings. What I don't really like is revealing your links right before you have plus two banelings finishing up in the corner of the main, but he's also gonna try to take a dive for this center base. One baneling, guys, he's gonna crash into stalkers. Shield battery dies immediately, and Night Phoenix, I think, is in trouble here. We've got three oracles, but I don't know where they are. And obviously, the Zerg army is looking pretty good. Finally, the oracles show up. In the end, 14 probes have died. We still have two banelings wiggling their way around the natural, and in the end, they will get nothing. Good crisis management there by Night Phoenix. That could have been an absolute disaster. But everything just falls apart really quickly. I don't know what's up with this queen. Mixer has some funny rally points. <laughs> that queen is drunk, guys. Well, that's the queen that's been watching cricket for a bit too long. It's like, alright, I'm just gonna drink a couple beers until this match ends. Turns out that the match goes on for three days. Queen absolutely hammered. Cannot find his way home. I love how often Mixu tries to get a couple of links into the natural, even though it doesn't always work, obviously, as he's just right-clicking on the Nexus for a split second. He's now going to just battle these Zellos. There are a few more Banelings, I believe, trying to make their way into this base. Good defense there by Night Phoenix, but there is no way to save that center Nexus. So Mixu gets what he's looking for. I really want to give just massive props and kudos to the way that Mixu is playing these EVPs. He has so many ideas, and obviously not all of these ideas come to flourishing and not everything is successful but it's a nightmare to play against this someone who tries to run into your natural every 30 seconds someone who does silly link drops in your main that if you don't pay attention deal a lot of damage big army shoves in the center and then more run bys at the third like mix is playing excellent starcraft here and night phoenix is, is having a hard time keeping up with mixu 
As Mixu once more sets up a triple prong attack. We have a Baneling run by into the third base. We have a big shove into the natural with Lings and Roaches. These Banelings guys are now just oh, <laughs> connecting with a lot of probes. And there's 15 probes dying. There's another army in the center of the map. There's a lot of probes here that would also be vulnerable. There's Mixu is everywhere he needs to be. And to quote, slowly, slowly falling, Mixu is here. He's there. He's fucking everywhere. This is the best Mixu I've seen in a little while. As he's just looking absolutely fantastic. And he's starting to just pick Night Phoenix apart. Night Phoenix does not know what he needs to pay attention to. Doesn't know what to react to. Mixu is playing an incredibly sexy ZVP. And this is the best Mixu that I've seen. At least in this match. I've been quite some time. He's going to get the Immortals as well in the center of the map. And just like that, it is all over. Jeez, man. What, a, what did Mixu have for lunch today? What is happening? I thought Mixer would be a minor underdog coming into this series. And of course, like ZVP, I know that Mixu can play excellent ZVP. We saw him have that legendary game one against Max Pax, where he looked fantastic. But, uh, I, damn. I am almost lost for words. This is very, very impressive what Mixu is doing so far. He was practicing ZVP with Rainer. That's an alright sparring partner, isn't it? Hmm. Sarah was watching as well. That's awesome. Can we please not go triple or going to blink? Well, like, if that is just his bread and butter, I, I don't think it's bad because there are still many ways to play it out. It's not that the entire strategy is I go oracles into blink and we're going to die trying or win the game. It's obviously that's almost like an opener. It's obviously a very long opener, but, you know, you look at uh, many other professional protos out players out there they pretty much always go oracle and then obviously they switch it up a bit with charge or blink once in a blue moon they throw in the twilight opening but twilight openings are considered inferior to the oracle opening so i don't think that's where it's going wrong i think obviously one big thing that went wrong for night phoenix in the previous game was losing five stalkers like one second before blink was ready that was very painful because that style is incredibly momentum based. You want to be right on the edge of creep. You want to be in the face of the Zerg. Find favorable traits. Get some value out of a lot of stalkers. And if you lose five stalkers that early. Yeah basically now you need to play Oracle Blink Stalker defensively. But I don't think that was the game plan at all. So perhaps Night Phoenix will just do the exact same thing again. And he won't think I'm losing because of the strategy. I'm losing because of the execution. I thought that it will be a 3-1 Night Phoenix win easily. I, I thought it was going to be close, but my honest prediction would have been 3-1 or 3-2 in favor of Night Phoenix. Which is still possible. The 3-2 is still on the menu, but if I look at those last two minutes of Dragon Skills, I mean, I feel like at this point we can bring out Max Max and he won't defeat this dude because he's looking amazing. Round three. <laughs> Fight. Bottom left side of Ancient, we are looking at the main base of one of the two Finnish Zergs that we'll see in action. And don't forget about the balls of steel in the, pre in the start of the previous game. His opponent faked a cannon rush and he didn't even blink, didn't react at all. It is Berserker Esports Mixu with one of his finest performances that... I mean, I don't want to get too carried away, right? And then it makes it seem like we're hyping up everything, but... I want to say this is some of the best Mixu that I've ever seen. And I've been following him for a long time. I mean, he was part of the Team Ruddy uh, WTL Code A Qualifier squad once as well. In that one, he went 0-2 against Reaper. And Reaper is nowhere near the level of this man. So it is really impressive what Mixu is doing. Top right side, the Ukrainian Protoss. Down 0-2. Needs to start turning things around. Maybe we get to see some double Stargate Phoenix. I wouldn't hate that. This is Hot-Headed Gaming's Night Phoenix. Does Night Phoenix get nervous? There is a chance, yeah. Uh, because obviously as fun as it is for me to just sit here and host a couple games. Players around this level, like StarCraft 2, there are a lot of tournaments. But to make money in StarCraft 2 is hard. And this is why a lot of the uh, players absolutely love the Big Rain Bouts. Because it's a single best of five to win 100 bucks. If you compare that to the Monday Night, right? The European Pro Tour Weekly. You need to make it into the final to win 100 bucks. So these are obviously, even though for us it's just chill, fun, a lot of people are just waiting for Sarah against Clem. For these guys, these are big opportunities and they really want to win. So yeah, there is a chance that sometimes players get a whole lot more nervous. 
uh, than I perhaps expect them to be or that I'm aware of. And obviously, I don't know how they handle it. Sometimes it brings out the very best in them. And sometimes that actually makes them fall apart a little. Right, it's not over yet. We have seen a couple of reverse sweeps in the big brain belts. And I think that this is one of these series where it could happen, but... Like, Mixu does have, normally, when I watch him in a best of five or the occasional best of seven that I've seen him play, but even in best of threes, Mixu does have, like, total off games where it doesn't just go, like, a little bit wrong, but everything goes wrong, the wheels are coming up, car is burning down, so... Like, there is a chance that Night Phoenix just gets, like, 14 drones in the first five minutes of this game, and then, obviously, we have a competitive series again. I know for sure. Like, I've been playing StarCraft for an incredibly long time. And obviously my job is not to win prize money playing StarCraft. Thank the Lord. Otherwise, Roddy would be homeless under a bridge in uh, Nevada. But I get nervous in every single little official thing I play. Like a best of one against Crank for just honor and glory in WTL. I get nervous. I play against this Chinese caster, uh, Xiao Si. I'm not very good at pronouncing his name. I already lost against him once. And I know that I'm like... Not to be arrogant, but I know I'm quite a bit better than him. Like, my MMR is way higher. I shouldn't struggle. And yet, I sit here and I'm like, fuck, I'm shivering, you know. It's, it's stupid and it's hard to explain, but... Yeah, that is just something that StarCraft 2 does to you. If I play those dudes on the ladder, I, I wouldn't break, uh, break a sweat at all. And I wouldn't be stressing over anything. I'd just be playing a game. I'd be memeing probably and still winning. But as soon as it becomes quote-unquote official and the results go on the league leg and you know people are watching, it's a completely different ballgame. And some people suffer from that. And then you have examples indeed like Raynor. Who, if Raynor ever feels the pressure, it kind of feels that that brings out the very best in him. But yeah, there, there are not too many Raynors out there, guys. It's kind, it's kind of difficult to become a Raynor in video gaming. And, like, the funny thing is, is that, obviously, I'm an adult, and I'm like, Kevin, like, I'm, I can tell myself, like, what the hell are you doing? Like, it's a video game. This is supposed to have fun. Like, you're stressing over absolutely nothing. If you're getting nervous over this, you're just an idiot. But I still can't help it. It's like, you know that it's silly, and you know it's not helping you, and you still can't really fight it. But that is the beauty of competition. Mm. Night Phoenix is playing a pretty cautious game three so far. Five and a half minutes in. He has only killed two drones, but he's got a different follow-up attack because he has obviously saved most of his adepts. Mixu wouldn't be Mixu if he's not going to try to make some magic happen immediately. The shield battery is not quite done yet. I think two stalkers is enough, though. This is an interesting little push, guys. And with only six queens and 22 links, this could become annoying. It really comes down to micro, pills are being activated. Cancel the shade. And now I want to see him get a bit more aggro, but now all the extra queens show up. I can't blame Night Phoenix for thinking he needed to make something happen there, but he ends up losing one of his oracles. Does do a good job of splitting up the stalkers, but we need to recall the stalkers right now. And he will lose one, I think the other three will live. I mean, nice try by Night Phoenix, but again, solid defense by Mixu. Right when Night Phoenix had the idea, this is the moment that I should really commit and go forward and fight those queens, the other queens showed up. That made it a lot harder. Demu was a letter god, but always had troubles in 20s. Yes and no. What I would say to Ben is that Ben struggled in tournaments. Don't you mean Meow? Meow is Night Phoenix. Meow is just a bit of a meme. That's not his official name. Uh, he's down, by the way. 18 workers. We have a spy going up. Let's just see how this attack plays out. There are 31 links, 6 queens. Obviously, Mixu does always need to stay sharp. If he does something silly... Like maybe donate a few queens as there is a stage threat that goes off as well. I actually think this is a fight that you can take a little bit with a bit of Link Stalk and Micro. Mitsu has a few more links somewhere, but I don't really see them. Not showing up. This is a great fight so far for the Ukrainian Protoss. So, to go back to Ben quickly. Like I've seen the entire Stalker 2 career of Ben. I, I would honestly say 
that there is not a single person on this planet that has seen more official games of Ben than I have. Because we were already good friends in Warcraft 3 and we lived together. So I think I've seen almost every single game that has ever mattered of Ben. Ben was indeed very good on the ladder. But Ben was also good in tournaments if people did not expect anything of him. If the idea was, ah, uh, Demu is overrated, Demu sucks, that's where he would play really well. But as soon as there would be a bit of hype around my boy Benny, and people would come in with high expectations, that's when he would terribly underperform and have way too early exits in certain tournaments. Like, Ben just didn't deal well with high expectations. And obviously then being on a big org like EG didn't really help, right? Because if you're an EG player, people expect you to do well. But every single time the community thought that he sucked and he thought he was going to get wrecked, he would do good. And whenever uh, they thought he sucked, or the other way around obviously, you guys get the drill as Mixus is going to get the dive on this army, gets a lot of the stalkers, gets two out of three oracles very quickly, and kind of felt that Night Phoenix did not anticipate the Muta count already being that high, or anticipated Mutas at all. But he at least can buy some time for himself, he is on 76 uh ropes and a couple of zealots here guys i think they might actually be able to get this hatchery mixer is counter-attacking he's in the natural of night phoenix and i want to take a look at that but at first i want to see if he gets that uh, hatchery or not he does get the hatchery how many stalkers are left though only 12 stalkers that is a bit of an issue but it might still be barely good enough as long as there are no extra links showing up i gotta say losing 20 probes that quickly hurts but if he gets every single muda it would be okay but he's not gonna get every single muda Still 13 middlers remaining. You need to properly micro your Phoenix here, my friend. Mixus is doing a really good job keeping this army busy. And now at the same time, we've got Zerglings and Banelings. Good job there, letting the Banelings connect with the Zalot. The Shield Battery Overcharge is fantastic. I want to say, I think Night Phoenix can stabilize. Yeah, that's once more losing 24 probes. That is a lot. <coughs> oh. Do we have, we have two observers. I don't know why they're both with our main army. It'd be lovely right now, guys, for Night Phoenix to basically have an ops over here and you have an ops somewhere over here. That's going to make it a bit easier for him to get his Protoss units in the correct position. And all he needs to do right now is just buy some time for himself. I wouldn't even hate some cannons. Sometimes you guys suggest cannons on very silly moments. This is actually a playstyle where I think cannons are excellent against. Muda Link Bane does not like dealing with a lot of cannons. He's going to just try to attack instead. I don't know about that. I don't know about that, guys. Night Phoenix is just kind of sending it on the other side of the map. It might be a brilliant call. It might be a terrible call. We'll find out eventually. He is microing the Phoenixes at least. Losing a lot of probes. He's basically becoming a two-base Protoss at this point. Don't lose your observers like that, amigo. Ah, come on. Not like that. Loses both ops. The spore crawler survives. Floodgates are open. I mean, Night Phoenix is going to lose every single probe that's out there because the vast majority of his probes are in the main. There is absolutely nothing keeping the main safe. Oh, man. I wouldn't even have hated this move out all that much if he just had one base that was a bit of a fortress with cannons and batteries and two Archons. Like, that would be unbreakable for Mudaling. Instead, he is just losing everything. Mixu has just made better choices throughout this best of five. And Mixu's making way better choices here in game 3. Night Phoenix embraced the base trade when he really didn't need to embrace the base trade. And for me, this is one of the more surprising outcomes in a best of 5 of the BBB in a very long time. Mixu winning it, that's not the craziest thing in the world to me. I thought he was a minor on the dock, but I, I've seen him play very well. We hype up that game against Max Pets for all the right reasons. Mixu has shown us great potential over the last few weeks, but... Like, we're looking at a Ukrainian Protoss that has been in the DreamHack Masters or the ESL Europe Regionals a couple of times against a mix who has never actually qualified, as far as I know. Did make it into close qualifiers. Jeez Louise, is Mixu making a statement here? That's wild, man. That is legitimately wild. Night Phoenix, two, three, four times perhaps Europe Regionals. Mixu has never done us, never done it. But he's showing us tonight that he is more than ready for those ESL Winter Championships qualifiers that are coming up in two or three weeks. As he gets a 3-0 victory in the co-main event. Gets us at least back on the schedule, so that's nice. I'm very impressed. That is one of the best best of fives that I've ever seen Mixu play. 
I mean, Night Phoenix is not a bad player at all. If anything, I thought Night Phoenix was the favorite. Night Phoenix has peaked higher on the ladder. Night Phoenix has had better competitive results than Mixu. Has been part of the big European online regional competitions that we've had. Whether it's DreamHack Masters or the ESL Summer Winter Championships. But today, it was all Mixu. Maybe it's just a night that belongs to the Finnish guys. But I believe there is a French kid that will have something to say about that. Let's see what you guys uh, voted for in the end. I know I have some Mixu fans watching the stream, but thank you so much, Basilis, for giving us 10 more subs for our third best of five of the night. I don't know what the prediction settled for, and this one I think is very hard to predict. But I know a lot of you guys love Mixu, but in my eyes, Mixu was a minor underdog coming into this best of five. Uh, I guess 55 45 in favor of Mixu, is that what you guys settled for? That is my guess. But I have no idea if I'm correct or not. 65-35 though. Well, you guys had a lot of confidence in Mixu. And he absolutely delivered. And Mixu in the chat as well. That was a great best of five, Amigo. I'm very impressed. That is one of the strongest best of fives that I've ever seen you play. Mixu, guys. Not just with the dub, but a 3-0 in our co-main event. He gets 100 bucks. And on top of that, a very nice confidence boost for those DreamHack qualifiers that are coming up in two weeks. So that means it's now time for our final prediction of the night. These two guys have recently played two series against each other. In the Masters Coliseum, it was this man who got the W, 3-1. In the Pigsty Tournament, it was this man who got the victory, 4-3. But if that was a best of five, it actually would have gone in favor of Clem too. Because Sarah was up 2-0 and Clem still took the 3 to 2 lead now obviously that's not how it works because there are certain builds that if you know it's the best of seven you may play out differently so you can't really go with that logic but they are one to one in series over the last two weeks you guys already knew that Sarah was going to play because the guys from WTL did not edit my little interview with him where Jonas said like oh on the 22nd I can play in the Basilisk thingy so that was broadcasted I didn't necessarily want to do Sarah Clem to me, it was kind of just seeing how the pick side tournament would play out, how Rainer versus Max Pax was going to play out, and then I was going to make a decision. I asked one or two other players if they were available, but in the end, after seeing that best of seven go to distance, I was like, all right, let's settle it then, right? If they're one apiece, let's settle it on the Friday night. They have played against each other before in the big brain bouts. Back then, Sarah won very, very convincingly. I will give you guys 15 minutes. I think, uh, I don't know if they're both ready because they were supposed to be ready at 9. Now let's just do 10 minutes. We'll do 10 minutes, guys. Sarah versus Clem, best of 5. 200 bucks, 150-50 split. I don't think you guys need to know the MMR because it is as big as it ever gets. We can even write the team names, guys. Basilisk, Sarah. And obviously I asked Clem uh, after the best of 7. I was like, hey, Clem, would you be down to play against Jona again? I was like, hope you're doing okay. And Clem said he was actually very disappointed about the best of seven, but he would have loved, or he would love to play on the Friday night again and uh, see if he can tip the skills in his favor. So should be fun, guys. Doesn't really get much better than this in the world of StarCraft 2. Serol versus Clem for the third time in two weeks. One on one. Who's going to bring it home? This will be our prediction. I'll give you guys 10 minutes. We'll take a tiny break. And after that, I'll be back with that main event of the Big Brain Bouts that hopefully nerds around the world have all been waiting for. I'll see you guys soon.